It's been a year since Ghana's worst cholera outbreak in history claimed over 200 lives. The epidemic was blamed on improper waste disposal, poor hygiene, and unsafe water sources. Poorly equipped health facilities worsened the crisis, with many fading away on benches instead of beds. From January to April this year, six deaths have already been reported and scores infected. Is the country facing another epidemic? Anodami investigates. A year ago, Mensa Guinea, where I currently stand, was in the news for all the bad reasons. According to the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, this place was inhabitable because of the insanitary conditions here. We are here a year on to find out what happened to the development the AME spoke about and also if indeed the demolition has held curbed any cholera outbreak. AME have now turned it into a, a, a car pound where they dump their seized cars, right? And then they have been coming regularly to make sure no one stays here. Now if you watch, the place has been turned into a dump site. People come to dump rubbish, they come to dump coconuts and everything all over the place. See, people burning rubbish over there and everything. That's what's happening. And what happened to the residents who were here? Oh, everybody has been dispersed. They've all gone. It would be possible, it would be a good idea if we could be recalled, if they are not going to make use of the land, the residents who were here. And then the land is apportioned to some of us. And then we can help develop it or maintain it for them. But That's you know that it was as a result of the outbreak of cholera. It was because yes. the place was so bad. Yes. The insanitary conditions here were so bad. Yes. That's the reason. That was the allegation. That was an allegation. That was an allegation. It wasn't a proven fact. Okay, let's put it this way. If there was a cholera outbreak and there was an Ebola outbreak or whatever, when they were coming down, wouldn't they have come with some health officials? But they didn't do that. They just came and gave us three days' notice to quit. I will quit, but see what, but see what, the, la see, see what the land has turned into. The director of public health at the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, Dr. Simsing Inimbwating, however, justifies the demolition. Mensa Guinness uh, uh, case was a very, very interesting one. You know, we, we received information that within a matter of two weeks, 16 people had died from cholera at Mensa Guinea. We investigated and we found out that most of the food which was being sold in Accra were prepared over there and brought to town to sell. And uh, we went there and uh, we didn't like what we saw at all. People were, uh, you know, cooking near open drains with raw feces. You know, fika mata, eskita hima, eskita person, with fries hovering around and, uh, you know, and that was the time when the quarter was at its peak. People will have to take their personal hygiene seriously so they don't become infected. Health officials advise the consumption of water from safe sources, regular washing of hands with soap and water, especially after visiting the toilet, the washing of fruits and vegetables before boiling or eating and cooking food properly. And should you buy food from a vendor, ensure it is hot and in a clean environment. Cholera is preventable. Don't get infected. My name is Hannah Odami for Joy News. The chief executive of the National Health Insurance Authority is blaming what he describes as the overly generous nature of Ghana's health insurance scheme for the current predicament facing it. The NHIA has been blamed severely for the many challenges plaguing the scheme, especially the non-payment of the claims of service providers who often threaten not to attend to subscribers. But Sylvester Mensa, who is speaking on Joy FM, says it is time the entire scheme was reviewed. The NHIA has often been in the news over one challenge or another plaguing the scheme. But the delay by the authority in reimbursing the hospitals, pharmacies and medical laboratories which attend to those who show up with the NHIS cards has made them unattractive clients who often are given second grade service. On several occasions though, these subscribers have often been turned away by service providers out of frustration their claims are not forthcoming. There have been suggestions the NHIA is unable to pay the claims promptly because government does not forward the health insurance levy collections due them. Deputy Health Minister Dr. Victor Bampo, however, disagrees. The trend is that uh, the releases have been more and more, um, should I say, proactive. So they've been more and more up to date. There were times in the past where they were delayed. But now, if you look at the releases even for now, I think, and Sylvester can correct me if I'm wrong, but 
on in terms on in terms of the nominal you know the funds that have to be released you know the from the NH, the, the levy from snet and so on then we are practically up to date the nhia boss confirmed the release of the nhil has not been much of a problem explaining it is rather inadequate considering what the scheme offers subscribers given the opportunity to re-establish a health insurance scheme in ghana wouldn't have uh, had or wouldn't have the kind of benefit package that we have it is too generous and our prescription has been that start with a very modest benefit package grow the benefit package as fiscal space allows and uh, uh, as you are able to inject funds into it importantly you must know what you want to buy and for for, for whom you want to do that purchase and it's so critical that you ensure that what you want to buy and uh, for whom you want to uh, buy fits into your budget and you need to project your inflows into the future and determine what you can buy now into that designed uh, uh, future that is what we didn't have and that is what perhaps is uh, a little deficient in our model mm -hmm. secondly we also began with a very uh, wide exemption regime uh, without recourse to to equity and sustainability by exemption you're talking about those who don't have to pay those who don't have to pay premium enjoy exactly yeah. so you have all under 18 years exempt from the payment of premium under 18 years account for almost 44 percent of our total membership and then you have all above all 70 years and above there are some 70 years and above who are wealthy enough who are uh, uh, sufficiently endowed to manage their own health care but we lump everyone together all under 70 and uh, uh, it has uh, equity implications he also described as inaccurate claims that the authority unduly delays in settling claims from all indications subscribers may have to prepare for either one of a number of options currently being contemplated in the inevitable review either subscribers may have to pay more to sign on Ghanaians will have to pay a higher NHIL on their purchases of goods and services and or probably a reduction in the number of ailments covered by the health insurance scheme. Communications Minister Dr. Eduardo Manibuama has hinted government plans to implement measures to bring sanity to the country's cyberspace, adding this will help end the abuse of media freedoms. He was speaking at the World Press Freedom Day event by the Ghana Journalists Association. I'm referring especially to the speed with which people such as citizen journalists put out information on social media without caring to cross-check their facts and figures. I'm also referring to the indecent haste with which reputable media houses, traditional or conventional, pick such information and publish them as the gospel truth without cross-checking. By engaging in such practices, you need to ask yourselves whether you end up crucifying the principles of sound journalism, ethics and law, or you advance the frontiers of this noble profession. Mr. Chairman, in recent times, we have been called upon on several occasions to help protect the privacy of individuals being negatively portrayed on social media. It is significant to note that these requests have come from all sides of the political divide, including non-politicians. We cannot and must not sustain such practices. Through now, the director of Blogging Ghana, Edward Tegu, who supports some form of control, says it must be possible to check illegal or abusive conduct on social media. But his question remains how government would implement such controls or checks. He spoke to my colleague Stephen Anti on today's big story. In China, if you have a Facebook account, can you log in? Well, you can access China legally. Uh, you can access Twitter legally in China right now. You have the Weibo, which is a local Twitter that they promote. In Cuba, South Korea, legally, the government owns every connected computer and so they can, they can actually shut you down because it's I there. See. In Ghana that's not the case. Mm -hmm. I own my own PC, I own my own phone. Mm -hmm. So the question is how do we transfer the traditional um, equipment to online equipment? If I insulted President Mahama verbally, you could arrest me. 
But are we equipping the, the authorities now to actually arrest someone who insults President Mahama online? Okay. Uh, we feel that the laws that apply to traditional media, such as uh, the law against pornography, the law against uh, pedophilia, will, will be able to actually regulate or help keep sanity. Oh, so you, you support uh, some form of some regulation form. Some to form bring of sanity. Yes, uh, I mean, community censorship. If obviously someone says something bad and it is truly, truly, truly wrong, people would come and actually attack and condemn. Mm. And I feel there are enough social media tools to actually do that. Mm. One, there are reporting buttons which people hardly use. Mm. If I feel that what you have written is abusive, I, report I can it. report and mm. Facebook would be notified. But people and don't. Take action. Exactly. Well, cyber crime expert Albert Inchibuisiako says sanitizing cyber content is possible only if the country can get the fundamentals right. He however cautions attempting to completely regulate cyber behavior will be impossible. In an interview with John News, Aisha Ibrahim, Mr. Inchibuisiako explained the only way governments can sanitize its cyber space is by creating awareness of the dangers associated with its abuse and strictly enforcing laws that prescribe punitive measures. In the bid to end what has widely been described as an abuse to media freedom, government says it will now regulate the cyberspace in the country. But the question remains, how feasible will this be? Let's gather the thought of a cybercrime expert, Albert Intribuesiako, on this matter. Tell me how government can stay at the Flagstaff House or probably the Ministry of Communication or anywhere to monitor what I am doing and to be able to control how I display or choose to work with my information. All right. uh, this is very important. I think uh, we're talking of internet governance issues here. The technology provides a lot of benefit to us. Of course, it has advanced our freedom, even in the cyberspace. You know, the, as you said, you're a little kind of, you're doing whatever you want to do. But uh, I think there is also the need for that regulation, but uh, we need to strike the balance. The balance between the privacy of an individual and also the security of the state. There is a way to do this. Uh, there's a technical way to do that, and there's also a you know, regulatory you know, framework. You need to put legislations or the norms in place to be able to address that. So that is a fundamental thing. Technically, yes, it is possible with the involvement of the telecommunication providers you know, to monitor content. Uh, within the means of communication also, or within the security setup, you know, there is this uh, possibility that we could also monitor what is being posted on online and if that, that contravenes and system legislations then you know perpetrators could be brought to book but more importantly we need a national cyber security strategy because if we want to regulate the behavior online we should have a policy in place and uh, I think in that line, a work has been done in terms of a draft national cyber security strategy has been put in place to address that. But I think the implementation has been a bit slow. That is where I expect to see perhaps a quicker action in terms of uh, implementing some of those things done. Uh, there is a risk always. If we don't put a legal framework in place, then you, you know you can just and trust anybody for monitoring your communication. We need to be clear what the rule says. You're talking about a legal framework and looking at a country where passing of laws is itself it's it's a it's a challenge. We have to go through a long winding process to be able to pass the law and its implementation sometimes also is a big problem. Do you foresee that we can get to this stage of actually regulating the cyberspace of in this country? Uh, uh, there's a limit that I think we can do. I believe that we take an approach that will lead to some level of success. Completely regulating online behavior is impossible. Not now, and I don't foresee it going on. There has been international efforts. Some of them, you know, had opportunity to participate. And we have, you know, our top Ghanaian uh, internet experts also involved in those discussions. And if you, you see the findings coming out, it all issues are going on. Even at international level, people are actually separating their network from the global internet platform. Mm -hmm. A big issue. We need to create awareness about the dangers, about some of these risks. In a related development, Chairman of the National Media Commission, Cabra Ble Amehe, has reiterated the need for people to respect the rights of others while cautioning the freedom of speech does not mean abuse of rights of others. All that is important is to recognize that your freedom ends 
where somebody's other freedom begins. So you need to be guided by the code of ethics of the profession or the respect for the other individual. So it does, it does mean that because you are free, you are, you are free to promote a message that would bring We're taking a break. We have more stories coming up thereafter. Don't go away. A warehouse stocking full mattresses at Achimota here in Accra was completely destroyed in a fire which occurred on Tuesday. The combustible nature of the items in the warehouse meant that firefighters had a tough time bringing the fire under control. Your news is Latif Idris was at the scene. The smoke from the burning warehouse could be seen miles away. At the scene itself, firefighters with four trucks engaged the inferno for more than an hour. Residents in the area, though, had complained about how long it took the firefighters to get to the scene, chipped in with several sachets of water. At the time that it started, I can see we called um, what we call a fire service and a lot of people to come out help us. But unfortunately, Azumi, you didn't get any, some of them to come and help us. So we, the boys who were here, Azumi, uh, did our best, yeah, so that uh, and then we can hold rescue or we can, Azumi, let the thing hold, the fire to, hold, to come down. That's the thing. But Azumi, one thing I can say is that the fire service people, sometimes they always do mistake because if you look at the time we called them and the time they came, yeah, I'm, uh, like the time they came, like um, what I can say is that um, I can't, although I can't even blame them because the, the thing, the, the, um, the, door, the fault is not come from them. The hero of the day was, however, a private tanker driver who exactly. came to the rescue of the fire service after the attendants ran out of water, much to the admiration of the onlookers. It's not me, it's the Almighty God, Allah, who is the one who helped all of her to, uh, to solve this problem. But uh, well, the first thing, first, I'm from Sonistra. I'm a Sonistra driver. I, I was sent for water. When coming before, I met that here to his doing what? It's get burning. So I can't take the water like that and go and give to people to, to drink and others will die. So I decided, me and some policemen here, we decided to bring the car back here to start often they listen before our do call our service man today will do what they come back and help and would, would they punish you for not bringing the water on time yes they will punish me by for already to, to talk to them they say the car is nothing but the water they use their money as supposed to do what just see them and collect the money and go and fetch another one from there if one of the owners of the company appeared too distraught to speak to the crew. Meanwhile, Deputy Operational Officer Gilbert Sango says it is too early to say what caused the fire. As we are here, we are here and the fire is what is in progress. Over here, we can determine the cause of the fire unless after firefighting. There that we can do what? Know the cause of the fire during investigation. Without investigation, we cannot determine the cause of the fire because we were not here working with them. We don't know whether there is light off or there is light on. We don't know anything because any that. Unless after firefighting. An opinion leader in the community used the opportunity to complain about the lack of fire station there. The police were also on hand to secure whatever was left at the warehouse. of Nasia in the West Mampusi district of the northern region have been displaced following a torrential rainstorm that hits the area on Sunday night. We'll bring you that story um, a lot later. But the Ashanti region police commander in charge of visibility has been demoted for poor supervision of his men. The action follows the arrest of one of his subordinates, Constable Emmanuel Sapong, for allegedly stealing an iPhone worth 4,000 Ghana cities belonging to a Chinese couple during night patrols in Kumasi. The 26-year-old has since been interdicted pending criminal prosecution. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin reports. The suspect, Emmanuel Sapong, is said to have stolen the phone from the victim's car during a search by the police. Constable Sapong, who joined the visibility unit two years ago, has allegedly admitted to the offence during questioning. Deputy Ashanti Regional Police Commander ACOP Osayampo Fuduku told the press in Kumase that the suspect and three others were on duty at the Parako Estates in Kumase about a week ago. 
During their patrol duty, the Chinese national and his wife were asked to stop at a checkpoint for routine inspection. According to ACP Duku, soon after the couple left the checkpoint, they could not find the iPhone. The Chinese national and his wife suspected the phone might have been taken by the police. Fortunately, they came across another policeman on bike patrol who said he could help them identify the police vehicle. On 1st May, the couple met with the second police who volunteered to help. When they got to the Santasi roundabout, they saw the car and the Chinese man identified the suspect. Wei later lodged a complaint at the Kumasi Central Police Station, as a result of which the patrol men who had been on duty at the Parakou Estate were invited for interrogation. It was during the interrogation that Constable Sapong admitted taking the phone, but had given it out for sale. On the directive of the Inspector General of Police, Constable Sapong had since been interdicted and will soon face criminal prosecution. Meanwhile, the regional commander in charge of the Visibility Unit, Deputy Superintendent of Police Bernard Chumberma, has been replaced by Chief Superintendent Christopher Abaka until further investigation is conducted. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin's report for Joy News. Still in the Ashanti region, police at Ejisu have been compelled to evacuate the station's cells after a suspect attacked some officers and destroyed parts of the structure. The suspect, a 37-year-old driver, was resisting arrest for traffic offences. Just this Sunday, and uh, normally Ejisu on a Sunday, the market day, there's a heavy uh, vehicle and at the same time human traffic. So this uh, particular driver, people who uh, is a Rasta head uh, personality, and then uh, he parked his vehicle just inside the Yasan so ran out. And that particular stretch of the Kumasi Accra Road is a very busy road, causing vehicular traffic. So the police, uh, MTG's attention was drawn to it. Uh, the chief inspector went to him and asked him to uh, move away from where he had picked the vehicle, but he will not. Uh, agree or understand uh, uh, the police officer. So uh, the police officer, the situation was becoming so alarming that he had to call the MTG commander uh, for his intervention, but that will not hold. The MTG commander also called the district commander, Chief Superintendent uh, La Barman, who came to intervene. Uh, but still, uh, people will not uh, agree or uh, listen to the police plea, but threaten mayhem, uh, threaten to uh, invoke the, the spirit of Antua, a uh, river called Dainty, on every policeman who would start even his vehicle. So uh, he took the intervention of the uh, district commander who decided to persuade this particular driver to move the vehicle to the Ajusa uh, police station. He agreed to uh, move in there. Uh, when they got to the police station, he didn't speak to any of the police officers or until the very first word uh, which came out of his where a mark was uh, put me in thought, if you think I've committed any offense, and he started uh, undressing himself, uh, pull off the shirt, and uh, I was uh, sticking on top of his boy uh, to try to uh, throw anything that he sees uh, uh, sighted around him at the uh, police station. So he went inside the cell, just uh, at the entrance of the cell, and stand uh, behind the, the counter of the, at the police station. So that is where he pushed a police, uh, a senior police officer, a chief uh, inspector, I'm told, to push him onto the ground and also threw punches at the uh, district commander, chief of attendance, La, La Barman, uh, before he held the, the counter, uh, the gate to the south. Uh, it's an iron gate, but everybody mm. was surprised that this uh, South Lidos man uh, managed to pull the, the gate out of the concrete uh, wall. The Greater Accra Secretariat of the New Patriotic Party says it has rejected the nominations of some parliamentary aspirants over the conduct of the party's General Secretary, Kwabna Ejepong. Mr. Kwabna Ejepong has said to have issued waivers to some parliamentary hopefuls, something the party leadership is unhappy about. Deputy Regional Secretary of the party, Adams Sabo, tells Joy News their action is in line with the party's regulations. Hopefuls came with such letters. 
Yeah, they came with some letters like uh, they've been given waiver by uh, the general secretary. Uh, but per the rules of the game, everybody is supposed to present the region with bankers' draft, which is to be paid into the party's national account. And that is what we are doing as at now. Mm -hmm. So there's nobody who has actually passed through this process with the waiver. All of them have been asked to go and then... Uh, so what you're saying in essence is that uh, these hopefuls, how, how many of them? Three. Yeah, they were. I think they were three in, uh, three, in three, number. Yes. Three number. They yes. Came with, uh, and uh, and out of the three, in fact, in front of me, one of them have come to pay the full amount and uh, the rest. Yes. No. For now, Commissioner Japan is here to respond to this because uh, it's here to respond to this particular this. But like I'm saying, as a region, uh, we are going strictly per the rules of the games. You're supposed to come with the required banker draft before you are allowed to go through. So as I speak, nobody is going through with the waiver because we are here to get a response from the General Secretary. Adam Sabo adds that the party has suspended the vetting process in Crow and Ablukuma West due to a court injunction. The regional office received a letter from the General Sec uh, Secretary's office that there was a court order sent to him uh, to put uh, on hold the vetting committee in that particular constituency. So he copied us uh, with a letter and that is what the region is. Uh, responded to. So for now, they are out of the exercise until we receive another um, notice, either from the court or the general secretary. The member of parliament in the constituency has also expressed innocence about this particular decision, and none of the executives in the constituency have also claimed ownership of this particular uh, report. So we are here to find the complainant or before we can even know why we are asked to put the veteran on hold. Claw two is on court, uh, in court, but with Claw's case, it is the old issue about the constituency executive this term, because I think they were supposed to iron some differences before this particular exercise. And then, uh, per the court's understanding that those differences are not yet ironed out, so they cannot uh, go ahead with this exercise what with that problem. Right? Earlier today, serial callers affiliated with the MPP were engaged in a fierce brawl at the vetting venue over secret tape recordings. The incident is said to have gotten so bad that they were throwing of chairs and stones. We're taking a break. We'll be back with more. Stay tuned. But it's now time for business and Abigail Adumaku entry is here. And apparently today there's been a whole lot of discussion about interest, interest rates, rates yeah. you know, and the fact that cost of borrowing is uh, really high. high. Mm -hmm. At the end of this discussion, are we getting any cheaper rates? No, <laughs> as a matter of fact, we would have to be contending with uh, a lot more higher rates. That's according to government. So we'd get uh, more details. Ooh, that's not too good news. Take it yeah, away. that's not too good. But let's see. It appears businesses in Ghana will have to contend a while longer with the high interest rates from banks. Although businesses say the phenomenon has unduly increased their cost of production, Trade Minister Dr. Ekospi Gabra says interest rates will continue to rise at least for the medium term speaking to joy business at a forum organized by the ministry and the institute of economic affairs dr spio gabra said the rise in the rate is due to the fiscal pressure government is currently dealing with the high cost of credit is less likely to experience a marginal decrease in the short to medium term. This is according to Trades Minister Dr. Ecospio Gabra, who tells Joy Business Government overspending on the macroeconomic level is largely attributed to the huge demands of Ghanaians. Speaking at the IEA forum on the high cost of credit, Ecospio Gabra says the only way to reduce interest rates is for regulatory bodies as a central bank to come up with the fiscal measures to address the situation. Well, it's going to be difficult for the credit cost to come down significantly as long as, as people have said, the macroeconomic environment is still uncertain and not as stable as some people would want. There are many things that the regulator 
which also is a public service institution, the Bank of Ghana should do that is not doing. And we notice, for example, that the Bank of Ghana Act does not seem to require them to do anything about cost of credit or about interest rates. And if it's true, then that is a, an area that we must, you know, see to revision. Meanwhile, renowned economist Kwame Pienim has termed the formula in calculating base rates in Ghana as practically useless. He insists high interest rates hovering around 31% can best be reduced should government cut down on spending. Government should stop over spending and borrowing. They should then also not be too rigid on controls and make sure that we do not go and destabilize the macroeconomic environment. We build it nicely and every four years we went spoil it and start building again. The economic firm on the high cost of interest rates also involved several industry players in the banking and finance sector proper ways by which the cost of lending rates can be reduced to improve upon profit margins. Let's do something on ADB now. And the managing director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Kofi Yamwa, says contrary to claims by minority MPs, the Agricultural Development Bank does not need parliamentary approval for its decision to go public. The decision by the bank to float its shares has been one of the controversial issues which has resulted in a standoff between management and staff in recent days. Though the minority managed to convince management of the bank to bring its initial public offering document to public Parliament for approval, the GSE board says that is not the practice. In our view, a parliamentary approval is not required because then it says the president's going for that that must be the norm. We know that GCB went through that route. PBC, which is an offshoot of Cocoa Board, went through that route and they didn't need to go to uh, parliament for approval. We believe that approval rests with the shareholder and the shareholder in this case, or the majority shareholder in this case, is the executive. Uh, we know that in time past, a lot of organizations were converted from statutory corporations into limited liability companies, and ADB is one of them. Uh, so if, if GCB went through that route and GCB uh, uh, prior to listing was in the same category of, 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 of ADB, i.e. Uh, fully government owned. And so if they went through that route and the sole shareholder then, which is the executive, decided and they went through the process, we believe that the current president should be followed in the same way, i.e. the shareholder being the executive having decided that this is the way to go or this is the route I want to go, it doesn't require a second level of approval, i.e. parliament. On to some revenue matters now. And the Ghana Revenue Authority is expecting an increase in tax mobilization with the introduction of the Information Exchange System. Commissioner General of the Authority, George Blankson, says the new system will help track the flow of tax and capital across the country's borders. George Blankson was speaking at a seminar for tax auditors on information exchange. We have automatic exchange of information agreement with, say, Holland. So under that, they furnish us very regularly with information on Ghanaian businessmen who travel through or do business in, in Holland. And we have this with quite a number of countries. It is the global forum that provides a platform for such information exchange and international cooperation in tax information exchange. This may put us in a better position to assess the tax liabilities of taxpayers and business entities, especially ones that have transactions that go beyond the borders of Ghana. So it contributes tremendously towards improvement in revenue mobilization in Ghana. That'll be all for business. My name is Abigail Adumakwenchi. Do keep abreast with business news on myjohnline.com. George Adu Jr. It's up next with sports. <music>Over 1,000 residents of Nasia in the West Mampusi district of the northern region have been displaced following a torrential rainstorm that hit the area on Sunday night. The rainstorm destroyed property running into millions of Ghana cities and rendered the residents homeless. Rainstorm that lasted for about an hour in the area wrecked havoc to over 78 houses and other structures including the Nasia Junior High School. 
electrical appliances such as refrigerators, television sets, foodstuffs and clothing of residents, among others, have all been destroyed. The victims of the rainstorm are putting up with friends, family members and relatives in the area whilst appealing for assistance. Officials of National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, are yet to receive relief items from the headquarters in Accra, thereby leaving the victims stranded and helpless. District Chief Executive for West Mampushi, David Wuni, tells Joy News he is overwhelmed by the extent of damage, which he says is beyond the district's capacity. We had about 78 houses roofed off, some of them complete, some of them the houses. A school block that is meant for the KG and the primary has been completely roofed off. It's also a center for their IC. Most of the computers and the books were submitted. The story here is supposed to be seen by all. As a chief executive, I want to use this your platform to appeal for all philanthropists and non-governmental organizations to come to our aid. We as an assembly will do our bid, but then I... Meanwhile, the Deputy National NADMO Coordinator in charge of administration says that National NADMO Office does not have enough to send to the Nasi Arayansom victims. He ever wants the central government to come to their aid so they can attend to the needs of the affected people. He spoke earlier with Evans Mensah. We have been informed of the situation. Uh, and what's happening? Yeah, uh, just like what the DC has told you, we are also working on it. We've had, we had information, so we have tried to put uh, some resources together to get some items to come and uh, assist the people of Nasia. So, so that you're still trying to um, put things together. How far are you uh, before? How far before we can expect some aid to arrive uh, in this community? Do you know? Yeah, definitely, you 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 will agree with me uh, that uh, that is not the only problem we have. And so, what what we 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 have is not always enough to 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 go around if. Let's say we don't uh, get any uh, items in addition to what we already have. So we are putting uh, uh, things together, especially the, the roof materials and all that we need. We will have to get money from uh, central government to get them quickly so that we can come and uh, 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 assist. So we will replace the roofs. You can put any timeline to it when they can expect something? Oh, definitely to be immediate because of the gratitude of the situation. You know, you after ranting and raving in the last few days on social media about the protracted energy crisis, some of Ghana's most popular entertainment personalities have announced the vigil to register their displeasure about the situation. The Dumso vigil is expected to come off on May 16 in Accra and will be led by actress Yvonne Nelson and popular hip life artist Sarkodie. Actress Yvonne Nelson, credited with the creation of the trending hashtag Doomso Must Stop, updated her Facebook wall with details about the planned vigil. She also posted a letter sent to the police, notifying them about the public gathering. Later in an interview with Joy News, Miss Nelson explained the energy crisis has become extremely unbearable. It's a problem. Like everybody is frustrated, you know. We're all citizens of Ghana, and it's, it's something that is. I don't know, it's just, the, the country cannot function if there's no electricity. You know, how are we going to be productive? Workers, workers are being sacked, uh, companies are laying off their workers. Um, people are dying in hospitals. Babies can't sleep, pregnant women are suffering. Um, entrepreneurs or sole proprietor, proprietors are losing businesses. So it's a general thing. You as well can't tell me that this thing is not affecting your life on a daily basis. So I'm a Ghanaian. I am suffering, and I believe that Ghanaians out there are also suffering. So I just want to be that voice. Yes, for the in the showbiz industries are also expected to join. Their aim, she says, is to put pressure on government to end the nightmare which is fast crippling the economy, costing people their jobs. Me and my colleagues are coming together to, to let the government hear our, our voices. Um, it's, it's, we're just doing a, a walk, okay, a very calm walk with candles, you know, where we're, we're urging everybody to come out with any light at all. It could be a torchlight, it could be a lantern, 
It can be a condo, whatever you want to bring. Come out. We're gonna walk from Begon to um, around the Akramo area. Um, we just want the the government to know that you know this is something that is is bugging us, is worrying us. We're we're suffering. And our voices need to the Greater Accra Region Police Command has acknowledged receipt of the notice for the Doomsaw Vigil. Public Relations Officer ASP Fiatinge Harava says they are yet to discuss it. All right, so now you know the celebrity version of our Doomsaw news is Doomsaw Vigil. That's it for the bulletin before we go quick round through our top stories. The National Disaster Management Organization is appealing to government to replenish its stocks of relief supplies as more than a thousand residents are displaced in the rainstorm and Nasia in the northern region. The National Health Insurance Authority is calling for an urgent review of the health insurance scheme if it is to overcome its many problems. And government is hinting with plans to check the abuse of media rights, especially by patrons of social media. Love you all. My name is Israelai. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good evening. is Joe News